One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. The link is in the description. All right, enjoy the video. What's up guys, it's Harry Haas, and today I'm going to be going over the 10% of broken stocks. Um, this is a topic that has been requested a fair amount. I was a little bit hesitant to do it at first because it does go against a lot of the MIC process, but I also think it is good because if you're a short seller and you can start to kind of recognize the warning signs of the stock you're shorting, well then, you know... We, we always say use hard stops, but you know, sometimes you can, you can get emotional, you can start fighting. Um, I know when I was a newer trader, I would always want to try and fight, I would want to always try and be right. And sometimes you can just get into that days where you just keep adding and adding and adding and then you're like, Oh my god, what did I do? So I know that this video does kind of go against the the uh, MIC process a little bit, but it is why I titled it the 10% of broken stocks because I don't want people to wake up every single day and be like, oh, I need to long this broken stock. I need to long this broken stock. When in reality, it's just, you know, it's broken, it's dead, it's worthless, and you're just trying to be a hero trying to long it. So, I mean, I think that uh, I've tried to do as best a job I could on explaining things and explaining my thought process in the day through this one so without further ado I'll just get straight into it but you know see I was hesitant to make this video because I don't want people just saying oh well it's broken but I watched this video from Harry so that means I should long it and then get stuffed on right that's not what I'm trying to do here what I'm trying to do is explain these kind of moves I have some previous examples from throughout this year and you notice how there's like the, the amount of examples that actually run, I can count on my hand because on the other days, something else was happening or on the other days, there was something that was kind of more important, a little bit of a bigger play going on. And so that's what I'm going to try and get into rather than just saying, well, guys, every single day, you know, you need to be longing broken stocks because, you know, that's not true at all. So broken stocks running, you know, it usually happens when we have a slower pre-market. A lot of things have faded. Um, there's very little options throughout the day. It's so slow. We have like one or two stocks up. And that's where I find, you know, we mostly are, are kind of getting in that, um, you know, what that's mostly when we kind of see these broken stocks kind of start running, right? Um, usually uh, it's the least popular stock. Um, or, or one that didn't get a lot of pre-market volume. It's one that wasn't really paid attention to. It's one that people think, oh, well, I can just go short at any level and it's going to be a slam dunk short. And then people start fighting and fighting and fighting. And then finally we go para because, you know, everyone's just, they end up just covering on top of each other and then long traders get involved and then it becomes the hot chick and it's just kind of bad news, right? It's usually at the bottom of its range. I mean, I don't really see examples where it's not at the bottom of its range. I almost always see it at the bottom of the range. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And it's usually, um, you know, it's usually on a day where, again, there's not a lot of stocks to choose from, nothing looks that great. And, you know, the money ends up usually funneling into, you know, kind of the last one left. Um, I kind of showed this funnel cartoon because I want to kind of get you guys to see what I'm kind of seeing as well. So in the day, let's say we have three stocks up here. You know, we have A, A, B, C, you know, we have this one, we have another one, and two of the stocks kind of dump. Well, automatically, you know, you know, if you're a long trader, you're not going to want to long these stumps, stocks that just dump. You're going to be afraid of them. You're going to say, oh, I don't want to get dumped on again. That tells me that a lot of money is going out of those stocks because in order for stocks to dump, in order for them to fade, money needs to be coming out of them and there needs to be kind of a reason for that. So when all the money is going out of all the stocks, I'm saying to myself, okay, geez, you know, you know, ABC is selling off, XYZ is selling off. Okay, well, obviously, these are two stocks that I don't really want to want to be involved in. If, you know, it's a really hard sell-off, there's not really a lot of support lines to go long off of, you know, I don't really have a plan here, it's a little bit lower volume. So I'm just going to eliminate those from my watch. But then when I see another stock kind of start to pick up a little bit, um, maybe, maybe it's kind of the last one left, the one that just didn't dump. I'm going to say, okay, well, maybe this one has a chance. And then I'm not just going to start 
you know, slamming the ass, saying, wow, this is the one, this is the one. No, I'm going to kind of make a plan on it. And I want it to kind of show me like, okay, like, let's see if you can get some volume. Let's see if you can start kind of moving here. I'm not just going to be like, oh, slam the, the ask because, because, Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in the MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line, and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. You know, if you're predicting that the money is going to go to that one, that's more of kind of a prediction. But if you're kind of letting the volume come and kind of easing into it, that's more of, okay, it's it's confirmed. You know, um, I'm thinking that the money is going to go into this one, but I'm not really sure. So I'm going to wait and see if it's actually confirmed. I'm going to wait and see if the volume's actually picking up. And that's something that I kind of struggled with in the beginning. Uh, when this kind of whole money flow concept was kind of being introduced, I was like, oh, wow, well, if the money's flowing to this one, well, I've got to be in this one. But, you know, you can't really chase. But a lot of members would say to me, you know, when we first kind of started talking about this, and I had a lot of phone calls with it, where people would just chase something that was running because they're like, oh, I think the money's going to flow into this one, and it's going to go back to the highs. And it's like, no, that's, you know, that's not what we what we talk about. We just talk about the general kind of, okay, the flow's here, the flow's there, the flow's wherever. It doesn't mean just chase every stock with a green candle because, let me tell you, that does not work. Um, and if you want to look at my last video about dumb losses, I mean, that's a perfect example as well, right? Um, you know, I personally have a rule where I don't like to chase those candles because I know that nine times out of ten, we need to pull back in order to go higher. So that's one thing that I've always kind of trained myself not to do. Example one, this one's from November 10th, 2020. The stocks that were up on the day were MEDS, WISA, and GTEC. And okay, why do I have this? Why do I even know this information? Well, number one, I keep a journal. I know what happens on every single day. And no, I'm not going to post um, all the back dates, all the hard work, and all the data that I have frigging, you know, done and tracked and done whatever. And I mean, it's not really that selfish. It's just, you know, you work hard to track these things. You work hard to say, okay, on this day, there was a broken sock. Why did this happen? Um, so, you know, I, you know, there was a guy who used to post all the runners and all that. I don't keep that much information on abnormal days. I do keep the information and on days where, um, you know, I think it's necessary. I do keep it. I always keep a journal of what I've traded personally. So I usually do have access to a lot of the previous runners and like the float and kind of what they did. But in my opinion, you should be keeping a journal every single day. And, you know, you won't be always asking in after hours, hey, man, do you have the previous runners for the last six months? It's like, bro, where have you been? You know, I understand if you're like a super new trader, but there's some people who have been in here for six, seven, eight months and they're asking for the previous runners. It's like, you know, you could just keep tracking that instead of every two weeks asking for the previous runners. You know, if you started tracking two weeks earlier when you asked for it the last time, you know, you'd be two weeks ahead now. So it's always important to kind of keep your own data, keep your own stats if you want it. You know, no one's going to really kind of track and journal for you. It's really up to you to really be on top of it. And I'm a big proponent of, you know, putting in the work and I'm not really necessarily a big data tracking guy, but I do want to track my own trades. I do want to journal my own trades and I do want to have kind of a dialogue with either a friend of mine, like a tab or even sometimes myself to say, okay, this is what happened on this day and this is why. Um, so this, this day was an interesting day. I remember this day very well. Um, around here, I believe this is where the memes started rolling in kind of pre-market in after hours. And so basically on this day, um, we have meds, which was a lower float. It kind of goes from six to eight in a, in a couple minutes and everyone's trying to long it. Everyone's trying to get in on it. Everyone's trying to long it. But as you notice, the volume kind of fades, we kind of lose it and we end up kind of fading. Um, this one, WISA, also another one that kind of went from 2.2 to 3.6. Very, very, you know, these ones that go really, really quickly, these ones that go from like 6 to 8.5 very, very quickly, you know, I'm really not a fan of them. Um, you know, I'm really not a fan of the ones that go, you know, two bucks in like less than a minute, you know, especially the higher price ones or, you know, I'm not a fan of something that goes from 2.2 to 3.6, like very, very quickly, right? 
and even here 2.5 to 4.5 you know that's like you know if you're gonna go up that quickly you know you can't I'm not I'm not going to take a long up on VWAP because this is just too overextended for me right I don't like that type of action pre-market, so I just avoid it when stuff goes like that. You know, maybe I might get a VWAP bounce, but for the most part, when we're going that overextended every single time, I'm going to avoid it. So in this morning, um, I, I don't think I really had any trades pre-market. I think that morning on pre-market, I didn't really have anything. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, you know, I don't really have any pre-market trades. Um, and the days that I don't really get a lot of pre-market trades, those are the most suspicious days to me. And the reason why is because I know that a lot of longs are definitely hungry, right? So thanks guys for watching. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed that. I know this one was a bit longer, half hour, but I think it's really important to kind of cover these topics, my thoughts on it, my thoughts on why they move. And you know, I'll always be back for the next one. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.